What is up with me girls? This is MJ Photos and welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing an e-bike called Cheetah by Maximal SG. And since this is the first time that we are talking about e-bikes in this channel, then in today's video, I'm going to be sharing a quick overview about e-bikes. Then next, I'm going to share about features and specs of this e-bike, a quick demonstration and test ride, and lastly, my thoughts and experiences in using this e-bike which I have been using for a couple of weeks now or actually almost two months now and you can actually see it in action on my previous uploads which you can see here, 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 here. But before we begin, let me just give you a disclaimer is that first, this e-bike has been sent to us by Maximal SG for free so we can do a long-term review and use this on my cycling expedition and PCN exploration around Singapore. But all the things that I'm gonna be saying is based on my honest and personal opinion. And second is that I am not an expert on this field, so I'm not a professional reviewer of e-bikes. So please bear with me and everything that I'm gonna be saying is just based on my personal and basic knowledge. So if you're okay with that, and if you're ready, then let's roll the intro. Okay, so let's begin with a quick and basic info about e-bikes or also commonly known as PAB, Power Assisted Bicycles. In this infographic from LTA, Cyclists must always wear a protective helmet and must be at least 16 years old to ride one. It mustn't have a startup assistance feature or throttle just like e-scooters, but instead it must run using the pedal assist system, which I'm gonna show you later. The construction and the material of the PAB must be similar to that of a conventional bicycle, so you should be able to use the same tools for repair and maintenance. Take note that the speed limit for e-bikes in Singapore is at 25 km per hour, which means that the boost must be cut off as the bicycle reaches this limit or sooner if the cyclist stops pedaling. The weight must not exceed 20 kg and it must be affixed with the orange LTA seal of approval, a registered rear number plate, and the EN15194 marking that shows the PAB complies with the European standard. Now, you may be asking how the pedal assist works. Basically, in general, at least here in Singapore, PABs are equipped with cadence sensors, triggered when you start pedaling at least once or twice, then engages the motor located at the rear hub to provide the power assist, or in this video, let's just call it the boost. Notice that you can hear the sound of the motor when you start pedaling, and it cuts off when you stop pedaling. So do take note that no matter how slow or fast you pedal, as long as it keeps moving forward, the boost will kick in and it stops when you stop pedaling or if you engage the brakes. Another thing you need to know is that unlike bicycles, PABs are not allowed on pedestrian footpaths and it's only allowed on cycling paths, park connector networks, or on the road, except of course expressways and road tunnels. And now that you have an overview of e-bikes, let's now check the features and specs of the Cheetah e-bike by Maximal SG. Here you can see that it's already registered and affixed with a rear number plate, an EN15194 marking, and of course the orange seal of approval from LTA. The 16-inch wheel foldable e-bike is made of advanced materials such as magnesium alloy and it weighs 18.2 kilograms. Now if you add the rack extension at the back, it will only weigh around 19.8 kilograms, which is still under the 20 kilograms limit. It is equipped with a 36 volts 10.4 AH detachable battery so you can remove it and charge separately with a recharge time of 5 hours. It runs on a 36 volts gear motor with a power output of 250 watts, standard in Singapore. And if you're planning to use it as a normal bike, it comes with a 6-speed Shimano index system with a rear derailleur. It is using a mechanical disc brake, both front and the back, and a tri-spoke wheel set with 16-inch pneumatic tires. When purchasing the Cheetah, you'll be provided with three keys, one for the main switch, one for the battery, and one for the security lock. So the security lock is not automated, rather it's just a normal bike lock, and it will be provided to you for free. Now, switching on the device, you will see an LCD display on the handlebar, which comes with only one button. For switching between modes one, two, or three, then you also have your speed, your trip distance, and the mode that you're currently using. 
Now over to the left side, we have a switch to turn the lights on or off, both for the front lights and the rear lights, which is very helpful at night. It also comes with the left turn or a right turn signal lights that also makes a sound, so you may find this useful. It also comes with an electronic horn. But personally, I still installed the bell because I still prefer the natural sound over the electronic sound. Now to remove your battery for charging, just simply use the key that is designated for the battery and check the label which says turn the key anti-clockwise to unlock, simply lift and pull, then gently take out the battery. Here on this side, we can see a quick uh, battery indicator to check the battery levels. And on the other side is the charging port for charging and you have your switch to turn the battery on or off. Now to put back, you just need to make sure that these panels right here match each other and just simply uh, put it in place and then push down. And then turn the keys on a clockwise direction. And that's it. Now moving on to the folding demonstration. As mentioned, this e-bike is a foldable one. So you need to take advantage of this feature because you can bring this inside buses as well as the MRT. We can see there are two levers. One is on the body and one is on the stem. So to begin, first we need to fold the pedals. You do it by pinching inwards and then fold. Then we do it on the other side as well so it doesn't get on the way. Next, don't forget to clear the stand. Then we go onto the middle hinge which has a lever and also has a stopper or a lock so make sure to unlock that one before you pull the lever and also there is a cable that sometimes could get in the way so just push it down before you fold. So there's a stand located at the middle so it keeps your bike standing when it's folded. And if you want you can also fold the handlebar stem so first you just need to unlock the lever and then pull the lever and now you have a fully folded e-bike. Okay, now it's time to give you a demonstration on the different modes that uh, this e-bike can run. But first, let me give you a disclaimer that this testing procedure that I'm doing may not have the most accurate data because I am not an expert or a professional on this field. So just take it with a pinch of salt. Now, there are several factors that you need to consider. First is that for this testing, I am only using a Strava application on my mobile phone and I'm not using a dedicated GPS bike computer. So the data may not be very accurate, but at least it gives you a measuring stick. Second is the weight of the rider and that's self-explanatory. Third is the tire pressure. So the lesser you have, the slower you can roll. And the fourth one is the terrain. So the smoother your path, the faster you can go. So today we are cycling at the Passeries Park and you have here some data overlays. I have here the map of the route, the speed at kilometers per hour, uh, the gradient and the elevation which doesn't really change because we are running on flat surface majority of the time. Okay, so first we begin without turning on the device which means we don't have a pedal assist or the boost. As you can see here, I am pedaling and I'm exerting effort on every pedal and we're just running around 15 to 16 kilometers per hour on average, which is actually suitable for cycling around parks and park connectors where you see and encounter other pedestrians and cyclists along the way. So it gives you enough time to slow down and maybe come to a stop. So what I'm showing you here is that you can use the e-bike as a normal bike if you don't turn it on or if you ran out of battery. But do take note that you are riding a 19 kilograms e-bike so you'll definitely feel slower than those normal folding bikes weighing just 14 kilograms or lesser. So next, let's test the different modes. So by default, when you turn on the device, it will bring you to mode 1, which is called the sports mode or the most power economic mode. Notice that my pedaling is now effortless, but I'm still running at around 16 kilometers per hour. And based on experience, I think this mode is recommended when you're cycling around parks and park connectors, especially if the place is crowded. And if you wanna enjoy a leisure time, enjoying the views, enjoying nature, because it will give you enough control if you want to change direction or come to a stop. So next is the mode two or the comfort mode which is a balance between power and energy efficiency. And this can actually meet most of the scenes of usage. 
personally I use this mode like majority of the time or 90% of the time on my previous cycling videos and I only use the mode 1 if I need to slow down if I see cyclists and pedestrians ahead and then after I overtake then I switch to mode 2 again. As you can see here in this testing, the mode 2 averages around 20 to 21 km per hour and can actually reach up to 22 km per hour if the path is clear and smooth. So this is really good enough speed and is also good enough when you're cycling on the road. And last but not the least is the mode 3 or the power mode which is the most powerful mode among the three and the speed that will reach up to 24 to 25 km per hour. It is mainly used for climbing high and long slopes as well as when you're cycling on the road and if you need to accelerate after coming to a stop on a traffic light. Do take note that the Strava data for the speed that you're seeing on screen is actually rounded down so you don't actually see 25 km per hour. But in the LCD display of the e-bike, it will actually show like 24.5, 24.8, and it will never reach 25 km per hour, which is the speed limit for park connectors and cycling paths. Personally, I don't use this on parks and park connectors, but if you do, please be responsible and be considerate, especially on a crowded place. So basically, I only use this when I'm cycling on the road or climbing uphill. And speaking of uphill, let's have some quick tests here on this uphill slope near Passeris Heights. This slope is actually notorious for cyclists and you see here there are cyclists that are dismounting their bikes because you would really need some good leg power to climb up this slope. So we begin with mode 1 and as you can see here we're running at 12 km per hour head start. As you can see the gradient or the steepness starts to increase at 3% uh, to 5 or 6%. And we're starting to move slower but still we're still moving forward and that's good enough and i'm not really exerting effort here i'm not pushing the pedals very hard it's just a slight push to a point that it can still spin forward so again the fact that you don't need to dismount uh, it's very useful for climbing up slope and then the next one is mode 2 and we have here a head start of 18 kilometers per hour and then as we climb up at around 4%, 5% gradient, it starts to go down to 8 km per hour. And as you can see, again, I'm not exerting any effort. And it's picking up speed and it's slightly better than the mode 1. And of course, for mode 3, we have here a head start of around 22 km per hour. So it should be a breeze. It should be an easy climb at around 16 or 15 kilometers per hour. So just imagine the benefit that it can bring or give to those people who have weaker leg power or have some knee issues or injuries in the past. Unless of course if your goal for cycling is to get gains or develop leg power, then e-bike is not for you. But if you just really want to enjoy and have leisure time and don't want to worry about getting tired after your cycling then I guess this is really a good way to conserve more energy and spend it with your family or loved ones. Okay so before we wrap up let's just quickly share my thoughts and experiences and I'm gonna narrow it down to five things. Number one is that you need to know your e-bike and to do that you must read your manual. So. If you have your e-bike, if you bought one, then please go through your manual, read everything that is written here. Or if you're planning to buy an e-bike, then by all means, please go to your local seller, to your local dealer, chat with them, ask questions. And if possible, please do a test ride first. Be comfortable, be confident if you're really going to buy one. Because for me, this e-bike thing is not just all fun and games, being fast, being cool. It takes responsibility and as, as they say, with great power comes great responsibility, right? So to avoid those incidents, then please know what you're getting into, okay? So next, number two is the range. I haven't really covered the range test earlier. So this is just to let you know that on paper, it is said to reach 70 to 80 kilometers. But this is on mode one, which is the power economic mode and then it is running on a flat track at a speed of 18 to 20 kilometers per hour without any braking or it's just like continuous straight path but that's not the, how the real world works right 
So on the real world testing, I've done it on a full battery that actually lasted around 45 to 50 kilometers. And this is using all the modes, like 80% of the time I'm using mode two, which is for general use. Then mode one, which I use when there are pedestrians along the way. And mode three, 10% of the time, maybe when I'm climbing uphill or an upward slope. So don't get confused if you read like 70 to 80 kilometers range, because the real world usage might be different. Third is the gears. So as I've said, this comes with Shimano six speeds, but in reality, you don't really need those gears. I mean, majority of the time, you're gonna be using it as an e-bike and you're not gonna be shifting it from time to time. So you only need the gears if you're using it as a normal bike or if you ran out of battery and you have to pedal without an assist. And based on experience, I actually ran out of battery one time and I need to pedal, but given the 16 inch tires, the 90 kilograms weight, the 40T chain ring, and the around 14T lowest cog at the back, you can't really go fast on this setup, right? So for me personally, my preference is I would trade for a bigger chain ring up front and give up the six speed at the back. In that case, you have a single speed, but you can go faster on a flat surface, right? If you know what I mean. Number four is the folding mechanism. So I've already showed you a demonstration on how to fold the e-bike, but actually there's a bit of a problem there because there is no means or way to keep the folded bike together. It means when you move the bike or when you transport the bike, then the bike could unfold. So the quick workaround for that and the fix that I did is just to buy an elastic strap, which you can see on my rack attached. So when I, what I do is when I fold the e-bike, then I actually use the strap to wrap around the stem and then attach it back to the rack. With that, you can make sure that the e-bike stays folded and attached to each other. And you can actually navigate using just one hand, which you can see in my video. So that's just a quick workaround, a simple fix, but it would be really nice to have that feature to keep them together. And the fifth one is just the handling or how you control the bike. So this is just a safety precaution that you must always keep both hands together on the handlebar. So when I'm running at 23, 24 kilometers per hour and I'm signaling a turn right, then it's kind of unstable sometimes. And if your hands are weak or if you don't have really good control or grip, then it could really go out of control. So just be safe out there and be in control. So ride safe. So the question now is, would I recommend this e-bike? Mm, that's a tough question to answer actually as of now because of the fact that this is my first time trying an e-bike and I don't really have the knowledge and the data to compare the different e-bikes out there in the market. Maybe in the context of should, would I recommend an e-bike over a bike, then it boils down to your goals. If your goal is to get fit or exercise, then definitely e-bike is not for you because this is more of the lazy people out there. <laughs> so if your goal is to have leisure time and to do more outside of cycling, like for example, in my case, personally, I prefer using an e-bike because of the fact that I am shooting content when I'm cycling. Uh, previously, when I need to shoot the content on the west part, Using a mountain bike, I would have to cycle my way from the northeast up to the west, shoot a video, and then cycle from west to northeast. And when I arrive here, I'm totally exhausted and just spend the rest of the day resting and recovering. But now with the foldable e-bike, then I could re I could just take the MRT from northeast to west, shoot the video, take an MRT back here, and I still have lots of time and energy for the day. So again, a big, big shout out and thank you to Maximal SG for supporting this channel and believing in our cause in exploring the park connectors around here in Singapore. And if you want to check them out, check the links in the description below and message them, contact them if you want to try their products. And do expect more videos to be uploaded in this channel using this e-bike. So stay tuned. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos uploaded every week. Thank you so much for watching and see you on the next one. This is MJ Photos. Salamat, amigos.